talk a lot about having and setting up morning and evening stand locations. There's a lot of people that fo focus, I would say um, when I talk to my clients, readers, viewers, that a huge percentage of people focus almost purely on evenings. And a lot of that has to do with you're getting out of work. It's just, you can get out of work early, go hunting, but boy, morning stands are where I've shot probably 75% of my mature bucks. And, um, and that's where I have a lot of opportunity. And not saying I, haven't, I have shot some nice ones in the evening, but uh, I'm always looking for my next great morning stand location. And I encourage you to too, but it's so important to have both. So a lot of times we're looking at stands and I'll look at it purely black and white. Um, I can hunt this stand with the evening, this wind, morning, and, um, and it's just very black and white. So if I know if a buck's in that area, I can use that stand. And a lot of times I'm adding a complimentary stand, meaning there's another stand that takes advantage of the same deer movement and in this case the there's a movement here we're down low and then 250 to 275 feet in elevation i think i'd have to look at the elevation lines but right up top we have a, another stand and i look at like a lot of these bucks they'll run this lower elevation then they'll go up above and so we could use these two stands even though they might be 150 yards apart and a, and a really great distance in elevation we can use both these stands sometimes to hunt the same buck and then at the same time, when we're so far down here low compared to that one, there's bucks that will use elevation change as their border. They'll do that with roads, fences, creeks, rivers, ponds, lakes, whatever it might be. But when we're down low, we have a valley that goes down to the creek right here. The creek's not that far away. And then it goes down and up the other side pretty steep. And there's ag land up above on the other side with some woods that rims that ag land where I'm, I assume there's some really good bucks to stay. That's a six, seven, eight hundred yards away. And what will happen, you'll see a lot of times is we'll have a buck from over there. They, he'll come down this lower elevation here, but he won't go up that elevation. A lot of times if you have mature bucks around, a decent age structure, then you'll see, especially in small properties, they'll slot in. And even though we're 150 yards away from that stand way up there on top, they'll establish the range of here or up there. And if they know a mature buck's up there, they don't want to tangle with. We see that in small properties, not something you're going to see in scientific studies or big movement public land studies because it's all out the window. Um, but when you have bucks that are slotting in to very small territories where they might utilize a few hundred acres and that's it a lot of times during the daylight that might only be 40 to 80 acres so we'll see that a lot of times so i like having stands for both we're down here low in elevation and we're going to show you up in elevation here in a little bit we'll show that second segment of this video but what i really like about this location is we have a lot of thick brush down here lots of very shrubs regeneration we have some aspen regeneration down here a lot of box elder, some junk, but what we also have is some really good apple trees. And so there's apple trees lined along this area. And there's this old two track that's cleared out down here. And I wouldn't mind widening this a little bit at some point um, because it's pretty tight even with the Kubota, the side-by-side -side getting in here. We just have a little bit to spare in some areas where we're gonna go rolling down the hill. But um, it's, it represents a bench of deer movement. And some people ask sometimes what's a bench? Imagine a flat spot on the side of a hill and a, and a giant, you know, some type of huge person or animal sitting just right down on that bench, backrest against a hillside, legs off the side. And that's what we have right here. It goes up steep and it gets really steep up there. What that allows us to do, so we have a mock scrape here and I put a Exodus cell camera, the render over there. And what I like about this location is that we have a great potential stand location right here. It's really close. And this is a nice stand location. Um, Diane actually said, boy, I wouldn't mind sitting in that tree. It's like a bird cage, so it's really pretty. What's really cool is we're down low. Morning hunting down low, a lot of people don't think of. We hunt, we've hunted a lot morning down low because we have a steep face right up here. Yes, a mature buck could go up there every once in a while, but for the most part, they're either down here or all the way up there. And that's the two key stand locations we have. So a morning wind location, as long as we're above this line of movement, this bench, our scent is gonna go uphill. So this is way away from ag fields. It's very remote. We can come in from the side over here. Uh, we can park a quiet cat up on top up there um, or walk in all the way. 
we'll park that quiet cat we can walk in all the way down this side and get into this location and what's really nice about that is we get in here quietly and get in around the ag fields and this is a spot where you typically do not see bucks at daybreak we're watching and shooting these bucks an hour after daylight the sweet spot I would say is between an hour, hour and a half after daylight and up till about three to four hours after daylight. That's when we see the movement in a location like this. Once we get down here and those thermals start to rise, which would be at daybreak. So this isn't something we want to get in here an hour before daylight because there's a great chance that something's going to move through here and we're going to blow them out because our sun's just saturating down here. So we're going to get into an area like this right about daybreak and then we're going to count on thermals to go right up here which means we have, have to have some type of northerly wind. This is a big draw that goes up to the north. So if we have northerly winds, it's gonna push our, our scent right here actually up to the southwest and, uh, and west. So it's gonna come from that east and it's gonna go uphill. It's gonna hit that steep bank right up there. And so all the movement right here, the movement widens out right here. The creek is right below us, it starts to funnel right here great morning stand i would not use this as an evening stand because the last half hour light that scent's going to spill down here even if it was decent during the afternoon set so really good spot to sit in the morning blow our sun up top and then down a little ways once we clear the hillside over here and we have north winds then we can count on those northerly winds say like a a, a northwest wind or north wind it'll it'll fall down in the creek down below us we have a really good pinch point with a giant cottonwood. We're gonna put a stand in, and it's the same thing only looking up at this. It's gonna be a great evening stand, and I believe we're going to be able to use the creek access to get in there. Now, a lot of people might say, we have this mowed out, and people say, well, you're gonna to have to walk right on the trail that the deer walk, and we do that all the time. That's why we keep it mowed down, or we use Roundup, or we're just on it all the time, it gets trampled down. But if you have clean boots, we use a Lima Shield. I'm not saying that I want that I'm not relying on something when I'm in the stand, but I believe fully that you can have clean clothes. We spray down with our, our boots. So we've had, we have lots of video of mature bucks walking right on our trail because we're keeping it mowed. All the grasses and vegetation, if it's hitting your sides, it's soaking up um, a lot of that scent, a potential of scent. Say for example, um, your boots, if they're tucked on the outside of your, if your pants are tucked on the outside of your boots, every step you take blows scent right down and saturates the ground down below you. So we tuck our boots in, we want scent going up because we're not worried about our scent when we're on stand because if a mature buck's downwind, we're gonna spook them. Regardless of what kind of contraption or anything you're using, you can't rely on it. So we're walking right down this trail. That's why we have it mowed right now. That's why we're keeping it clean. And uh, we'll actually mow it again to keep it right down to the dirt almost. So I can get into the stand. We're not leaving a scent. We're not leaving a trail. Get into the stand. This is a great morning stand. Evening stand, about 75 yards down the trail. And the cool thing is, we have the cell camera on here right now. And you see we added the cell camera. And what I like about this, this is one of those spots where I just want to see that the mature bucks are moving through here. And I like putting our cell cameras in remote locations that we're not coming back to very often. Um, in fact, we haven't been here that often. Dylan's filmed with me several times out here and he's never been down here. So um, Diane's been down here twice. So it's not a location we come to very often. Once I see mature bucks using this or a certain buck that I want to really keep tabs on, and that might even be closer to September, we're going to let this thing run and tell us what's down here. I'm going to stick a Lift 2 camera on it, which is our, the HD video version that we like to use. And so at that time, I'll get that. I'll get the cell camera out of here. I use the cell camera as a great scouting tool. And, um, but I really like that HD video because it tells me where he's coming from back here and moving through, or it gives me a really good picture of the behavior for mature bucks. And I mean, I'd rather see a 15 second video clip in HD than, uh, than a few snapshots. And so that's why I do that. And so I, I hope that makes sense down here. We can hunt this morning because our wind's gonna go up and they're gonna hit that steep face above us. Of course, if we start spooking out deer in these sits, well, last time we'll sit here. Um, I don't like to spook deer at all, but I believe we can have a safe sit and that'll be a morning stand. We have an evening stand down here and I can't wait to show you the stand up above because that one's really killer stand that we can get in a lot easier and, and it's not that far off the field edge, but it's in a great cruising location. We've had some really monster bucks hitting that 
uh, that scrap scrape location up there and uh, I can't wait to show you that one and we're gonna get out of here take the Kubota climb out of here it's uh, it's a it's cool terrain I love this steep terrain when I first looked at it I you know dropped off the edge so quickly up there but once we got down here Diane found her first shed just right over here and we saw all this flattens out above the creek edge and the movement that was here and all the rubs and scrapes, then we knew we had to hunt somewhere down here and, uh, and we already have a couple stand locations picked out. Let's take a look at that one up above. Hey, sorry to interrupt this video, but my web class series is finally begun. How to design your whitetail property is on my website and there's a link in the description. Please check it out. Now here we are at that complement to that stand way down below. And again, I've checked the elevation change. I don't know if it's 200, 250, 275, but we're a long ways up from that stand down below. And there's different ways. You know, we're, we're not gonna walk in this way to get to that stand down there. We actually walk in from about 600 yards away, come through the bottom to get to there. This is a perfect complement though. There will be some bucks that will be high and low, but this gets us into another territorial line where there's some bucks that'll be up high here and they will not be down low. And so could be that we see, and that's why we have a camera right behind me on that tree. We made a mock scrape right here so we can tell every buck that's coming through here. And this has been a dynamite location for showing us a lot of mature buck movement through this area. And so you can see the stand right over here. This is a, a great stand location. And, uh, and I'll talk about why we're gonna hunt this, but it's right, right up there. You can see our family tradition stand. And, and that stand is actually, we're, uh, I think we're 24 feet up there, a little bit higher than I normally go, but you can see from right here, that stand is probably only about five feet above my elevation here on this bench. That's where a lot of the movement's at. So we need to have that stand pretty high. Now some might go 35, 40 up in the tree, but that's not me at all. And so I've actually shot quite a few bucks in this hill country uphill. And so you really just have to play the wind. You're allowing those bucks to come through and you're not, it, the mock scrape, I can't tell you how important it is. Even the camera on the location back here on that tree, it sticks out quite a bit. We had Kermit when he came through here, he noticed the first time he came through, he's been back through three or four times. So when he didn't spook after that or didn't look at it, by adding the mock scrape here, every buck that comes through this area is focusing right here on this mock scrape and this licking branch. It's the same with that stand down below. It's the same with every stand that I have in the woods, I add a mock scrape. They're focusing here when they come in. They're not focusing on me sitting right over there, 20 yards away, five feet above them in a tree. And they're only focusing on this. So really helps you, even if you're a beginner bow hunter and you're, you have a hard time moving around. And uh, you know, I say an experienced bow hunter that knows what they're doing, they can get away with wearing, like I say, a plastic bag over them and get that shot off, making that noise and knowing when to move. But that doesn't translate into a beginning bow hunter, someone who doesn't have those seasons and seasons like Diane. You know, she doesn't have all those years of being able to move and know what, to, what she can get away with. So having this right here, really, uh, it's almost like it ups your skill level and your experience level just by using this because it's going to take the focus of not only you in that stand, but also that trail camera on the tree over there. They don't look at it when you have this for them to focus on. It's a great stand. Winds we're getting right now, they're coming westerly. And in the morning, wind just blows off that. It's a huge ravine down there, very deep. And deer do, will never smell us in that location in the morning with westerly winds. Come with northwesterly, southwesterly winds great location for morning just blowing off that way right there now at the same time because it's such a steep face down there again it's an area it's so steep that we're blowing our scent into it from down below but that scent's not getting up here on this bench it's lifting off and getting right out of here even though we're way below it's going to ride that face and just keep going up like a ramp so we're not going to get winded down there unless there's something close to the stand on the upwind side of us same with down here. We can hunt this in the evening and blow this right down below. And again, we're walking right through here to get to that stand. We use a limit shield. There's a lot of sprays out there and products and uh, that's one that we believe in and we trust. And um, not saying there's others, but that's one that we really like. And, but clothes, washing our clothes, 
spraying down our boots, keeping them clean, keeping these trails mowed, keeping our axis so we're not going through a bunch of brush in there. And I'm out here standing in shorts and, and uh, tennis shoes. And uh, we're fortunate we don't have the bugs like a lot of other places I've hunted, including the UP of Michigan. That was absolutely brutal up there for 10 years working in this heat right here because not only did you have to put up with the heat, but you had to put up with all the mosquitoes and bugs and biting flies and black flies in the spring and the horse flies in the summertime. We're pretty good here with the wind. Might be a compliment to where we have bucks up here, bucks down there, the cameras are gonna let us know. I'm hoping we pick up some more mature bucks or another one or two down there. And when those bucks are coming through this time of year, even if it's random, even if it's just once a month, they're telling you, this is part of my wheelhouse, this is part of my movement, and even if they're not coming back till the middle of the rut, they're telling you they're gonna come through here during the daylight, they'll be back. And so even if we lose a lot of these mature bucks that are coming up, for one, we don't care about spooking them here during the summertime because a good deer hunting parcel does not build deer numbers during the summertime, builds it during the fall. So bucks shift their patterns of movement. We're trying to keep them this year by adding fall food, fall cover, great access. So we're trying to make a lot of changes so that uh, those bucks will want to stick around. But if they don't, they're still telling us, hey, I might, this might not be my fall core area, but I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna be back during the middle of the rut. I'm gonna be back during the daylight. You just have to pick a great weather day. We use HuntCast. HuntCast, I talk about HuntWise and HuntCast, and the reason for that, it's not some you know, sponsor that's just paying me money to promote their product. It's a sponsor and a partner, a business partner, that is specifically using my weather algorithm that I published in the Outdoor Life November rut issue in 2015. It's the way I've hunted for 30 years. HuntWise is putting it into their algorithm this year. It's everything I recommend with hunting the weather. That my all weather whitetail book that came out two years ago. That's what it's all about. So I found a partner that would build this together. I know it'll be better than any other weather forecast out there. And it's not because I'm getting paid to say that. It's because it's partly my algorithm and what I've used for 30 years, so I can highly recommend it to you. This isn't just something, you know, some product on the side. This is something that's taken a lot of years of research. When HuntWise tells me to come out here, and that's a good spot during the middle of the rut, and I'm hunting a non-core buck that lives somewhere else, then I know I have a high percentage of chance of shooting that buck out of that stand. Regardless, winds in the morning that way, we're good. Winds in the evening that way, we're good because of the steep face. It's a great compliment to the stand location down below tried to offer a lot of strategy in this video and and really that's what we're doing right now is I don't have time to walk all these woods and, and scout some of the other day said you haven't even walked the woods yet that's what they would do and I'm focusing on the things that have to be done the food plots the mock scrapes but especially the stand locations where I know I could kill a buck in here because of the winds because it's a funnel because it's an area that I know bucks pinch down and move here I put a camera on it mock scrape to let me know that that yes indeed these bucks move through it this is the way they move through here then i locate the stand and that tree right there will be a money tree this fall and i hope you love these setups they're complimentary setups and this is what i'm doing it's i don't know if you call it speed scouting or limited scouting again i don't have time to walk the woods and figure everything out i'm going to basically hunt this land with only looking about 20 percent of the land this fall because i'm purely focusing on where i can actually kill a buck not just wandering around the woods looking at the cool trees hope you like this segment and these two stands and how they work together and uh, we can't bring, wait to bring it to you this fall because i want to be sitting right there with dylan shooting between those two trees over there with the camera from the backside. I hope one of those monsters comes through, but either way, we're gonna enjoy sitting here because of nothing else, the view is really spectacular over there. And I hope Dylan's capturing that a little bit too, because it's gonna be pretty awesome in the fall.